Hey, what's up? Welcome to another episode of the John Gill Podcast Show. And on this episode, I'm super excited to have on our special guest, Evan Knox. He's an investor. He makes companies profitable uh, for small companies. And he's the founder of Caffeine Marketing, uh, where he does story brand, story brand, uh, story brand guide. Uh, and, you know, the, the biggest issue right now is most small businesses are struggling with marketing. And so he's going to walk us through his company, what it is that they specialize in, and how he's helping uh, small companies grow their business. So, Evan, thank you so much for being on the show. Hey, Jonathan. I really appreciate you having me. It's been a blast. Yeah, thanks. And thanks for your patience earlier, man. I know we had a little uh, technical <laughs> difficulties here, but <laughs> hey, man, but we're, we're, we're right. right. So, so thank you so much. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and about your company. Yeah, for sure. So I run Cappy Marketing and we make marketing profitable for small companies that have less than 250 or so employees. So generally like sub $25 million range. Um, and that might look like advertising. That might look like building a sales funnel or websites. But at the end of the day, our promise is that we're going to try to make the marketing profitable. We're not just offering many of services. We're here to actually grow the company. And then the other thing that I do is I function as sort of like a power investor um, in our little investment group. So I'm currently a partner in like, um, I, don't, I don't know, the number is somewhere around eight um, different small companies. And essentially, I function as a CMO in our investment group and also, you know, a, a financial partner as well. So. That's amazing. That's amazing. So walk us through a little bit about how the, the how a company, they approach you. Walk us through the steps. Uh, that h- how you would look and underwrite a company and see kind of their blind spots and how you can walk them through their their uh, their challenges. And Absolutely. Are you thinking there's kind of two routes to go? There. Yeah, yeah. Um, are you thinking more so with the agency or with the investment side? Uh, with the agency. Okay, cool. So most companies will come to us, and a business owner has had some success in the past. So maybe they're around a million dollars, stuff like that. But they have no repeatable and scalable way, or no repeatable way to scale their company. Um, they may have, you know, essentially through grit and hard work, gotten to one million or five million, whatever that number it is. Mm-hmm. But they don't have a marketing funnel in place where they can give, um, you know, Facebook or Google one dollar and get ten dollars back. Uh, and so what we do is we essentially build a marketing funnel out so that they can scale and grow their company. Now. They don't necessarily think that way when they come to us. Most often they come to us and they think, uh, well, actually they say a lot, hey, we just really need to get our name out there. We've got this awesome product, we really need to get our name out there. When in reality, the thing that they need is a predictable way to scale and grow the company. Really what they want is marketing profitable, but they don't know how to get there. Um, they don't even often know that there's a predictable um, path to success. That's awesome. So... Uh, so, so it involves a lot of uh, Facebook marketing, a lot of uh, uh, click funnels. Um, can you can can you share with us exactly some of those uh, techniques? And so, for example, myself as a real estate broker, uh, and you know the the mm-hmm. show really we talk a lot about uh, different real estate investing, entrepreneurship mindset, but we do focus a lot on real estate uh, because that's what we that's what I do. I'm a real estate investor and a broker. Yeah. And so, you know, for my business, how can we, you know, how because I was very interested uh, when I saw your profile and I said, man, we got to have Evan on the show. Uh, he has, I, I feel like I can use this for my business, right? So how do we, you know, how, how, can you walk me through how I can leverage your techniques and and, uh, uh, and how that process works? Absolutely. For like a broker, um, real estate it's broker. Gonna a, yeah. It's going to be like a... Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a free consulting session. So that's what it's going to be. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm totally kidding. Um, but I hope it does. I hope it's that, that powerful for you. But we want to first start with messaging. So I know we're already, in, we're immediately going to tactics, um, which is really important. And you have to understand tactics. You have to understand what platforms are going to work for certain types of companies. But we have to go back and we have to look at messaging. Personally, I think messaging can make or break a company because if you don't have the right messaging, people aren't going to pay attention to the words that you use in mm-hmm. your copy or in your video or whatever. Right. So I see that as the bedrock or the foundation for a good marketing funnel or a good marketing strategy is to have the right messaging. You mentioned StoryBrand earlier. Um, we use the seven-part StoryBrand framework to create our clients' messaging, and I really love it. Um, it's been extremely profitable for our clients. And 
at a really high level, if you're not familiar with StoryBrand, the general concept is that it uses the seven principles of story in order to invite your customers into a story instead of just telling your story. So essentially, it makes you as the business, the guide of the story instead of the hero. Because in reality, customers and clients are not looking for another hero. They're looking for a guide to help them win today that will ultimately help them avoid failure or achieve success. And so we want to start with me- with messaging. Um, I really do love StoryBrand. I think you should check it out. Um, or obviously, we, we can help you with that. And then if we go on to the next step, then we're designing... We almost want to create an audit. So we want to understand what it is mm, you're currently okay. doing. Yeah. And... Or else we're really just going to continue to do what most entrepreneurs do or business owners, which is just throw stuff on the wall and hope it sticks. And hope it's like, that's the thing. Facebook ads are going to be the thing. When in reality, we need to almost make an account of what's working and what's not. And so let's just really oversimplify this. And this honestly is probably sufficient. I think often we make marketing more complicated than it needs to be. But if we just said that a funnel... So I want you, you know, everybody out there to picture an upside down triangle as a funnel, right? So you can, it's wider at the top, it gets narrower as so you, you go down. And this is essentially the path that your customers take or your potential clients take. And so we start with brand awareness as the top of the funnel. The first problem that you're trying to solve in that moment is make them aware that you exist and that you uniquely can solve their problem. The next phase is consideration. And at this point, we're really just trying to stay top of mind for these potential customers or clients so that whenever they're ready to buy, they'll actually buy from you. And then last is conversion. And at this point, we want to make it as easy as possible for people to buy your product or service. And if we think of it in those three steps, brand awareness, consideration, conversion, we understand what it is you're currently doing. Do you have any sales funnel campaigns? Do you have um, some sort of opt-in on your website or discount code? Mm -hmm. Um, And really, honestly, messaging is really critical for where you're at when you talk to investors, um, when you're talking to um, different owners. really important. Um, But then do you have ways to stay top of mind for these investors? I'm sure an investor newsletter is a very simple example of what that might look like. That is awesome. Wow. That, that's, that's, uh, that's definitely, uh, powerful, powerful stuff. And I have to say, I am not using any of it. So maybe that's what I'm lacking on, (laughs) you know, I mean, because it's, it's, it's really complicated. You know, for example, I, I, even playing around with the Facebook ads, I mean, it's it's confusing stuff if you don't know what you're doing. I mean, and I think a lot of people throw their money away uh, thinking that they're boosting their posts, but I'm sure that there's a lot of more technical things that go to it, right? I mean, you've got to do direct targeting, and and I think, uh, and so that's I'm I'm assuming is also where you step in with those funnels and and uh, where you help the businesses uh, out. Yeah, absolutely, and then. An ideal scenario, we get to do everything for our client, right? So we get to initially come in, and, and this often happens, and it's great, is when the, we're going to design the website for them, we're going to design the sales funnel, the emails, uh, we're going to create the ads for them, we're going to run all of that. And that's, that's ideal, right? Because I can control end-to-end, and right. I can make sure that it's profitable. Often, small companies don't have that big of a budget. And so what ends up happening is that we'll start off with Facebook ads or LinkedIn ads. And we'll just see if we can make it profitable, even with what they have. So if we're able to get a 5 to 10x return on investment for them with what they have already, with that you know old, outdated website, with no follow-up sequence of the emails, if that's already profitable, we know there's a huge potential um, going from there. But the thing that you also mentioned is boosting posts. It almost makes me want to... Um, kind of shake every business owner by the shoulders and go, (laughs) never boost a post. Don't waste your money. Um, And it's not that Facebook's evil, but Facebook is a business. And they want to make it as easy as possible, if we remember back back down to the conversion part, they want to make it as easy as possible for you to pay them money. When in reality, boosting a post is just a really easy way for you to pay Facebook money. It's not a great way for you to get results. And so if you actually want to run campaigns that are profitable, First, you have to understand marketing strategy. You have to understand Facebook ad tactics. It's got to be part of a bigger marketing funnel. And then once you've got all of that, you need to actually use Ads Manager. And what you're going to do in Ads Manager is you can create different types of campaigns that are optimized for clicks or add to carts or sign up for your PDF on your website or actually book a call with you. You can actually select these different optimizations and then split test campaigns from there. But it all has to be part of a bigger strategy that you understand. 
Well, that's great. And uh, thanks for telling me that. So I'm going to cancel the uh, post that I just boosted literally yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, Please do. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. cancel it, man. Uh, geez. Well, that's good. Um, so, OK, that's fantastic. And now for companies, uh, companies that uh, have higher revenue, uh, how are you catering to those businesses? I really love companies that have higher margins. Okay. I think that those are the easiest ones to work with. And the reason is, is because you're really looking at a cost per acquisition. So we've got an e-commerce company that we recently um, started working on that is, you know, average ticket price is around $900. That is like my dream because I now know that, and I've, we've got about, let's say it's about 50% margin of the product or something like that. If I can acquire a new customer for less than $450, it's profitable which is, you know, pretty easy if you know what you're doing. Sure. So in regards to higher ticket items, it's really advantageous for ads and advertising um, because much easier because you can actually scale it a lot lot quicker because you're getting a greater return. It's much harder when you have, you know, a $40 checkout. But in your, you know, situation, when you have these larger deals and you're talking, you know, several thousand dollars, then at that point, it's often a longer lead time or a sales cycle. So then we're looking at leads. We're trying to get a gauge on the optimal, like how many conversions or how many people are actually going to convert out of the leads that we got. Um, so at that point, there's got to be a little bit of trust and there needs to be transparency sure. and communication between whoever's running the ads and actually who's doing the sales calls. But going back to the higher revenue, so higher revenue companies, um, you could only spend, I mean, recently we're helping a client right now who's only spending around $3,000 on LinkedIn ads, which is not a lot on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're crushing it. They're like on track to double the size of the company right now. Wow. And I don't think that you always need to spend, you know, so much money in order to get results. Okay. Um, I think it's generally proportional to whatever your product is though. So you should be willing to, to spend at least what you have in margin for one customer if you have a higher ticket item. So say um, a typical deal is going to net you at some random business out there. It's going to net you $25,000. Okay, well, you should be willing to spend $25,000 in ads to see if you can acquire one customer. Or else you're really not doing it justice. Um, mm. You just kind of, you know, if you spend $1,000 and a customer is worth $25,000 to you, you're not giving it a fair shot. Got it. That that's a great way of looking at it, and also creating a budgeting, uh, creating a, a proper marketing budget, which is I think what most uh, entrepreneurs at the beginning fail to do, and that's you know they try to keep a hundred percent of their uh, revenue, and uh, when when they should actually be allocating the largest percentage in you know reap, uh, get, reaping new clients and customers, right? Uh, and then walk us through also, because I'm looking here, you, you, you do sales funnel creation, the videography, graphic design, copywriting. What exactly is copyright, copywriting? I, I hear it all the time. What, what exactly is that and how important of a role does that play in marketing? Well, the difference between good and bad copywriting could be, you know, another 100% increase in sales. Okay. Um, just by trying a different version of copy. But copywriting very simply is the words that you read on the page. Okay. So on a website, it could be all of the words on the, you know, the website that you read. Um, and you could even translate it over to social media that the words that you use on social media, that could be considered copywriting. A traditional copywriters is probably not the best suited for social media, but that is considered copywriting. Okay. Um, so really it's the words that you use in order to sell to people. That's awesome. Okay. Well, great. I mean, this definitely helps me understand. I mean, at the end of the day, most like I'm lacking on on ninety percent. In fact, ninety nine percent of the stuff I just told you I boosted a post the other day. So I mean, this is something that definitely we um, we have to we have to implement. And if anyone wants to reach out to you, Evan, how, what's the best way for them to get in contact with you? So. You know, it's funny. We're talking about all this stuff and it feels kind of burdensome, right? You've got like the 90% of stuff that you need to do. Um, this is a sweet segue here. I've got a guide on my website that'll teach you how to build a sales funnel. Basically like a Lego kit for adults in marketing. So it's just a checklist. It'll teach you step by step what you need to do in order to build one with your current um, website and make it profitable for you. 
you just go to caffeine.marketing or evannox.com. It's on both of those websites. But really, all of this stuff can feel really intimidating. Um, but what I do like to do is just to try one thing at a time, just like a sales script. Like if you're talking with a potential client, you have your script and then you change and tweak one variable at a time. So if you take off, I mean, who knows? Boosting the, the Facebook um, post for you might be the thing that's just, you know, helping you crush it. No, it's but not. But <laughs> if you, okay. <laughs> well, for me, um, if you, if you were talking to me specifically, but not go on, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for you, maybe it's not. But if you just take it off, you know, say you spend a hundred dollars, I mean, a hundred dollars is not going to make a difference with the ticket items that you have, um, or the ticket service that you have. But like, let's say you're spending a thousand dollars. Well, okay, then take the thousand dollars off and just not do that for a week. Do you see any difference in results? Um, to so think of us all as like middle schoolers and we're just running science experiments. You have to split, you have to test one variable at a time. You can't do them all at once or else you won't be, you know, aware what's the thing that's actually working. Right. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great way to, to look at it. And, uh, well, I, I have to say, I mean, that, that, that is definitely, uh, what I needed to hear today. I mean, that's exactly what I think our audience needs to hear, you know, and, um, can you implement this? I mean, so it's any business generally speaking, right? I mean, there's no company out there that, that can, I mean, I think any company out there that is, that doesn't have a social media presence is probably losing, like you said, you're five, 10 times the potential revenue. So definitely get on board with, uh, with Evan and, uh, Evan, are there any other, uh, last statements or anything that we missed? We didn't touch on that. Maybe you might want to, uh, share at this moment right before we kind of sign off. Yeah, I think, Marketing can feel complex, and I think sometimes people can be suspicious of marketing. Not necessarily the ethical side, but like, does this actually work? Like, can this actually grow our company here if we pay X number of dollars to Facebook or whatever? Um, and I, I, it can. I see it every day. Um, I recently logged into a Shopify account, and we're seeing a thousand percent increase in sales for the last thirty days. Wow, which is absurd, right? Um, well, so. we just added. Yeah, added the right tracking, got Facebook um, sorted out, got Google ads sorted out, um, and now we're scaling it really quickly. So it can work. Um, and I just, I know that there's a lot of fear. And sometimes we get, you know, business owners or in real estate, you can have, um, sometimes have a scarcity mindset and you play like an awkward middle ground where you go, I'm going to pay a little bit, you know, I'm going to dip my toes in the water, but you don't actually commit. You don't hire an expert. You're not willing to share. Um, and you just, you know, you just, you have this like profit leak almost where you're spending just a little bit of money because you know you should be, but you're not willing to actually go all in and right, make it happen. Right. So, you know, go all in or stop wasting your money. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's, don't land in the middle. That's awesome, man. What a great point. Exactly. There's, yeah, there's many people guilty of that. And I think you described it exactly that's my, that's been my biggest challenge too, as a broker, you know, I, I, I spend a little bit, you don't go all in, you know, you're kind of testing it here and there, but at the end of the day, I think that's why you don't get the results that you really should be getting is because you have to fully commit a hundred percent. And, uh, and then, so how long is that process? Uh, is this, is this a, a, uh, you know, someone reaches out to you, do they expect to get results? Um, immediately is it like you know give it 30 days give it give it 60 days give it 90 days to really kind of test the market and and some of the branding techniques that you're using um what is a general time or is every industry different obviously so yes every industry is different most companies though as long as their sales cycle is less than you know 60 days it's probably pretty appropriate okay. um sometimes it takes maybe a week or two or three weeks to optimize the campaign to really get it dialed in but yes, you should be seeing results. Like there should be some traction within the something. first 30 days. And yeah, it's, it's pretty push button solution, which is funny because it reminds me of like, that's really what busy business leaders are looking for is a push button solution. So that's why they go for the booze. Cause it's just like, ah, I'd rather, I'd rather pay Facebook, just throw away a couple hundred bucks right. than actually take the time to like <laughs> think about how to build a sales funnel. Right. You know? Um, so I feel you. I'm the same way. I'm like, I just pay somebody to do it, you know? <laughs> but. 
Well, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Evan, man, thank you so much for being on the show. It's been great. Uh, and I think this is exactly what a lot of our guests are going to need. Uh, so so thanks again. And they can reach you at, uh, as you mentioned, uh, caffeinemarketing.com. Yep. Caffeine.marketing. No, dot com. Oh, caffeine.marketing. Caffeine.marketing. Beautiful. All right. Well, thanks so much again. And, uh, you know, definitely we're going to continue to be in uh, contact here. All right. Sounds good, man. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Thanks so much. But yeah, this is great, honestly, for my, for my business. Um, you know, what does something like this? So, you know, I'm sure you've dealt, have you dealt with other real estate brokers yet? Mm. Uh, okay. You know, for me, I can tell you that my budget has been around like, not, I mean, when you say you were dealing with a small company, I mean, how, how, how much, how, what's kind of the budget that you're looking for in order to take kind of clients? You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I know I'm dipping my toes, right? We just talked about fully committing. <laughs> Literally, I've probably yeah. been on, um, I don't know, it's 15 podcasts where I've said, uh, <laughs> yeah, real estate agents do this weird thing. I promise you, I say this. I'm like, it's like real estate <laughs> agents and lawyers. I don't know how to describe it, but they like, and if you can, if you can honestly, if you can give me a better way to describe this, it would be great because what I see literally, uh, it's almost like every real estate agent and lawyer. It's like um, clockwork. It's like clockwork, right? Yeah. Well, it's like you make, I mean, you make a lot of money. Um, and you have the potential to make a lot of money, which is awesome. And I love that. And I want you to make a lot of money. But sometimes it's just like this weird, like, skepticism and cheapism. And like yeah, scarcity the cheapest, thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm always like. I know. I know. I'm like, okay, it's so nuts. one sale can make you 25 grand. Okay. Right. But you're not willing to spend 25 grand on a website? I don't understand right. that. You know what I mean? Of um, course. I see what you're saying. I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. yeah that's, that's the, and you know what? And you hit the nail on the head. That's why I think you said it earlier best, man, which is like, you know, that, that, don't dip your toes if you're going to go and go all in. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, you know why they have that mindset and why I kind of have it too. It's all Tell me more. You've got, you've got, well, it's cyclical, you know, it's like real estate cyclical. You're, you're, you know, I think every business is like that too. Right. But at the end of the day, sometimes you're running high and, and, uh, you know, things are going great and, and, you're, and you're wanting to, okay, allocate this amount of funds to your marketing, but then you've got these just crazy routes where, you know, for months you might not have a sale and, and you've, you've got, uh, you know, you've got monthly fixed expenses that are just, you know, coming at you. So you want to build a, a nice reserve. Typically in real estate, for example, you want to have at least maybe like a four to five month reserve. Um, and, and you're afraid to tap into that because if you do, um, you know, and you don't get a sale, you're screwed, right? But yeah. technically speaking, if you did tap into that, from what I'm, from what I'm hearing, I mean, it, from what I'm hearing, you would produce enough clients that then you can close. Maybe the you deal. wouldn't have that problem. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's, but that's that's really what it is. I mean, honestly, it's 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 just basically the fact that you know we're we're uh, it is a little cheap for sure. But it's also because we, if you've been in the bit, well, at least for for me, I mean, I've been doing this now ten years or over that, and you you just have great months, you've got great years, and then you've got crazy like ridiculous bad years, and then but they, it all averages out. So um, I think it's just taking advantage of what you offer when we're when we're on that peak, yeah. And then we can actually like you know, or maybe we should really be going all in when we're on the low end of the cycle because that's when we need it the most. It's, it's a weird thing, you know? Yeah. I like, okay. So think of it as like a, there is stuff that you can definitely do on a recurring basis. Um, and that's all important, but a lot of this stuff can be automated. Like you could set up to and overhaul your website and build a sales funnel. You don't have to change that for six months. There's no reason to do, you know, it's the same people. It's not the same people got to see it every single time. It's like, um, if you had some sort of lead generating PDF on your website, they're only going to go through it once. You just no reason to change it if it's not working. Um, so anyway, you build all these things up so that you have a consistent amount of leads. And honestly, when I started my company, 
it's not as seasonal, I would say. I mean, there's probably like a couple of months out of the year that like businesses are not like in full go mode. Um, but I will say when I started my business, I didn't have any of these automations in place, right? And I slowly built them over time, slowly put in advertising, slowly put in the sales model, whatever. And now I'm at the point where I'm like, I'm just going to keep raising my prices until people just won't pay it anymore. You know, just because we've got so many consistent leads, like at least two leads a week that are like really qualified. Um, and I'm not saying that it's like a, Oh, whatever. Cause there's probably, no, that's awesome. Of, that's awesome. That's exactly. Yeah. But it, all I'm about to say is it doesn't, um, you just continue to slowly build so that you have that consistency. And even today I was like, man, I never asked for referrals. I was like, I, I don't have any referral thing going. And so I've been trying to build out that part of my, the bottom of my sales funnel. You know what I mean? Sure. So, um, never ends. I'd say you remind, it also reminds me of a story of this, um, couple, they have a really small company, I think less than a million. Um, but they used to go to trade shows and sell opals. I remember that. Um, so they sold opals at these trade shows and they had a like pretty unique line. And they kept thinking, man, I really need to, like, we need to redo our website. Really need to make a Shopify website. Really need to like invest in ads and scale this business yeah. online. No yeah. one could have ever predicted the pandemic, right? But like, it's one of those things where it's like, if you have the capital, just be patient, reinvest it back in. Um, yeah. Anyway, you know, but you mentioned where, what would, you know, what would we even do? Um, or where should we start and what would it cost? Uh, I don't know. It probably would require farther conversations. It's at least sure, our sure. minimum stuff is like 2750. So 2750 is like our minimum stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But like websites and jazz like that are like 15 or so. But okay. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Got it. No, that's, that's great. Okay. Well, no, I mean, like I said, that helps me to understand. Um, and, and then, and then, so basically we just did the, we would uh, set up an online well, we would do this basically uh, a one-on-one. -on -one. You'd figure out, you'd audit, you know, what it is that I'm currently doing, and then you would just show me, okay, I think this is what we have to, you know, start first, uh, right? And then you would just continue to automate that, or do we continue to stay in contact? Uh, throughout? Yeah, I'm sure that sounds super like uh, like you're walking into a fog almost because you're not sure what you're getting. What we would do is like if you were serious and you're like, all right, I think I actually want to do this. Um, then yeah. we would find another time where I would ask you, I've got a, a process that I run companies through. It's, it's not an onboarding okay. sequence, but it's more so making sure that we can make this profitable for them. So I'll ask you a bunch of questions and I'll get sure. to know your current business, how you currently acquire leads, all that jazz. And then I will recommend, Hey, here's what I think priority one, two, and three are to give you the best like return on your investment. Um, and I don't know yet, you know, that might be Facebook ads, that might be your website, it might be a sales funnel, um, but I'd want to have an at length conversation about your business before we do that. Sure. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Well, I mean, listen, I'm going to have to, uh, this is something that I'm going to actually think about then, uh, okay. you know, so because it's in line with what honestly I'm lacking, uh, you know, with, with my business and, and uh, yeah, I think we're going to have to have that conversation. So. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much, man. I, I appreciate you, uh, being on and this is, this is actually great stuff to even possibly add on to the podcast uh, itself. I'm still <laughs> you know? recording. So yeah. Oh, are you? Oh, it, oh, yeah. oh, okay. Then let's keep it because you know what? This, this was great. Um, this was actually really good. This was really good. Yeah. So, okay. Awesome, man. Well, let's, let's keep it. And, uh, thanks so much again. All right. And then we're going to definitely be in contact. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. Okay. Okay. Take care. Thanks, man. See ya. Bye. All right.